Imagine a commercial airliner like United taking up a new policy and saying, you know what, we want our pilots to be able to choose the planes that they fly with. We don't really care if they're up to code, we don't really care who's on the flight, we just want them to have more freedom and flexibility, and they can actually access United resources while they're on the plane. Would you get on that flight? If it sounds pretty sketchy, it's actually quite similar to the access that we give our users by default in Microsoft 365 to our corporate resources. By default, they can access corporate email and sensitive files from any device on any network from anywhere in the world. So in this episode, I'm going to show you the exact policy that you can configure to go ahead and restrict access down to securely manage devices within your organization. Before we dive in, just a quick intro. My name's Nick, I'm a Microsoft MVP and creating content here in the channel for the better half of a decade. Okay guys, so diving in here, just a quick recap. Last week we talked about the allowance of personal devices into your corporate data and some of my top policies I'd recommend. So if you didn't see that video, definitely check it out. I'll link it in the description here of this video. But primarily today, as I mentioned in last week's video, we're always gonna try to push them towards these managed devices and having those within our ecosystem reduce our tax surface, reduce our risk significantly. And today I'm gonna to be walking you through this first policy here, which is requiring a managed and compliant device for access into our corporate resources. As you can see, some of the basic benefits that we have, high level benefits is related to control over our asset inventory within our environment. And then we can also enforce device compliance, meaning the health of that device and that health metric can include things like, is it patched? Does it have antivirus protection and things like that? So it's just more granular protections and more reporting on our end. When we talk about you know the secure access, by default, as I alluded to at the beginning of this video, we really have unimpeded access, if you will, into our corporate resources. Users obviously have identity protections like username, password, multi-factor to get into and log into their corporate email and files, but the device itself isn't really restricted with the settings that are configured. So there's a lot of considerations here. We're gonna double click on the PC today, but in future videos, we'll also talk about the location, the network, and even the mobile device access as well for viewing your corporate data on the go. When we talk about these policies though, we're primarily talking about conditional access within Entra. And so within there, I also like to think about a layered approach to security. Because in a lot of cases, we have our customers that are in different levels of maturity, or we as MSPs might be in different levels of maturity as well too. So when we talk about this flow here, it's a basic diagram when we talk about attempting to log in and having some validation and checks that are going on to recognize if it is a managed device. In the Microsoft 365 world, we're gonna be talking about if it's Entra joined or if it's hybrid joined based off of you having still a local Active Directory. And this is gonna dictate us providing access into our corporate resources or us denying access. Within the 365 Entra Admin Center, we can go under devices and all devices to kind of see our device inventory. And as you'll see here, we have this field, a metadata point called the join type. And this is what I'm talking about as far as what we're going to be filtering on for the access that we're going to provide. So we'll get into a different video where I'll cover how devices are registered and how you can prevent certain registration within there, but we want these joined devices onto our network and we want them to either be hybrid joined or just entre joined so they're cloud only. In that sense for device access for this first layer of policy. So to create that, we'll go under the conditional access section here. We'll go under policies and we will create a new policy. I always like to use a designation like 100 for the policies I institute in all customer environments by default. So this is one we're always going to try to achieve within the first you know, 30 to 90 days tops. And ideally, they're already in a state where they're not allowing personal device access. So it may require some communications if they are already doing that. But ideally, you can enforce this pretty quickly and reduce your tax surface quite significantly as well. So I'm going to say require managed device here for the policy. Under the users, we're going to say all users. Here you would also want to exclude a break glass account. I'm not gonna do that for the sake of this example, but it's just best practice given the policy we're about to implement. 
Under the target resources, we're also going to say all resources. And this, if you're thinking this is new, it is because it's now called resources, formerly known as cloud apps. So that's interesting. Um, and then we have under conditions here, we're going to filter for devices. So in this policy, the grant control we're actually gonna say is we're gonna block anything that's not ONTRA joined or ONTRA hybrid joined within our environment. So we're gonna configure this filter, we're gonna exclude a device, and we're gonna say the trust type here equals ONTRA joined. And depending on your environment, you know, you could have both or you could have one or the other. So if you're running hybrid, you could say that the trust type equals, and you could also say hybrid joined, and you would make this or expression here. You can see that written down below. We'll click on done here. And then under the grant controls, you're going to just strictly block access. So this is only gonna allow users from this policy. It's giving me this heads up here to exclude users based off of not wanting to lock ourselves out. Well, this would be the first policy we want to configure for that layer one protection. If you guys are enjoying these videos on policy recommendations and want a tool to audit the security of the Microsoft tenants that you manage, check out a tool that I built called Cloud Capsule that you can leverage to perform a free automated security assessment against your Microsoft 365 tenant. You can add a tenant in just a few minutes here. And when you do, you actually get a automated report of security from that tenant, including a mapping to the CIS controls, which gets into some of these policy definitions that we're talking about, which even address the one we're talking about today, which is managed devices shall be required for authentication and looking for the exact conditional access policy that we're trying to create. So if it looks interesting, check out cloudcapsule.io and run your free assessment today. Layer two protection takes us a step further and requires additional layer of maturity because it assumes that you have your devices enrolled into Intune for an MDM deployment and you're also deploying device compliance policies. So like I mentioned earlier, this is taking this a step further to look for things like, is the AV active and installed? Do we have the device up to a certain patching level? Is firewall enabled on the particular device? Because even if it's managed under our ecosystem, it could still be tampered with, with malicious types of attacks, or it could fall outside of compliance based off the settings that we configure. So within here, we also want to validate, this would be kind of a step up from the policy that I just showed you, or you could create them in tandem uh, with each other there to basically say, we want to enforce device compliance. And if it's not, we're not going to provide access to corporate resources. So the big thing that you might be noticing here, if you're not doing this today, you also, as a help desk, need to have a process in place, an SOP, for when a user opens a ticket and they say, I can't access my resources, it's giving me a message and saying that I can't access it because my device is not compliant. So you have to have a way to proactively respond to those types of requests or reactively respond to those requests because the user will be basically locked out of their account until you resolve that. So back in Entra, we're gonna click on new policy and we're going to say it's 101 maybe, or maybe this is a 200 policy for you that you get into. Require device compliance. And then you would still do the same things that we did here. We're gonna target all resources. We're gonna target all apps. We're not gonna target a network for this guy. And in this section, we're not going to do anything except for configure the device platforms. We're specifically going to exclude in this way, if you wanted to configure this, iOS and Android devices so that we can perform and apply our MAM policy. Technically, you could have done that with the last policy as well too, just so users aren't prevented from accessing the, their application data on their mobile device. But there'll be a future video I create on that policy that you'll want to set up as well too. But effectively here under the grant controls, you know, we're going to say we're going to require access. We're going to require the device to be marked as compliant. If you're running a solely just hybrid environment, this is another setting you could have done optionally for the other one here, which is just to say require Microsoft Entra hybrid joined device. And technically you could do these as a combination of, maybe it's a managed policy and it's a combination of these two factors as well. In this case though, we're just saying that the device needs to be marked as compliant. And then just like before, you know, we are excluding again in this particular case, two device platforms for the mobile section here. 
and we will have to give consent here that we're not going to exclude Linux from this policy. And then again, you would want to have a break glass account associated with this policy as well too. Okay guys, that's everything I had for you today. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and sign up for those notifications if you haven't already. If you didn't see last week's video on securing device access for BYOD and personal devices, definitely check that out. And next week we're gonna get into the next recommended policy I have for secure device access. I'll see you guys next week.